Alright everyone, welcome back to Random Fixes. So, do you have an old laptop that is just lying around that you don't have a good use for it? Or you just upgraded your desktop that you have a bunch of spare computer parts? Or you are just tired of paying for cloud storages? So if you are, today's content is right for you. We're going to talk about how you can set up a personal network attached storage, or NAS for short, with commonly available computer parts. So, let's get started. So setting up a NAS is almost the same as installing Windows or Linux system, except that there will be some fine tunings for user settings and accessibility that will take at most 10 minutes if you're following this video correctly. So just like installing Windows from a flash drive, and you will need a flash drive that has a minimum size of 8 gigs, but 16 is better. I mean, come on, it's already 2020, a 16 gig flash drive already costs less than 5 bucks. Also, if I can get 100 plus likes on this video and my subs number passes 200, I will give out a 32 gb flash drive for free. So you can check out the video description on how you can get it. Other than a big enough flash drive, you also need another computer that you can load the NAS system onto the flash drive. So in this case, I'm using Windows and I'm using free NAS as the NAS operating system. I know many of you guys love to use Rufus to create the bootable drive, but unfortunately that does not work for me. And there are many complaints about blue screen of death when people trying to create the free NAS drive with Rufus. So in this case, I will be using Bolena Etcher, and I think the process is straightforward enough that you should have no problem in following it. So with the bootable drive created, let's plug it in and get installation started. After plugging the bootable drive into the computer, in most of the cases, you can select the bootable drive by hitting the F12 key after the machine started power up. Then select the USB option from the menu, and then the free NAS system will start to install automatically. So when it comes to this page, select install to continue and then select the drive that you want the free NAS system to be installed into by hitting the spacebar. And then just a quick tip, you don't need a large drive for the OS, a 60GB SSD is adequate enough to handle the system smoothly. And then select yes and then give it a password. Now this password is used for the route that you will be used to manage the NAS through the web later. Then select either one of the UEFI or BIOS and then just wait for the installation process to finish. After everything has been finished, select reboot and then remove the bootable drive from the computer. Now the first startup will take some time to finish. After the system has been fully loaded, you should be able to see something like this. And you can access your NAS through this IP address which is in the red box here. Oh, here's one thing I should mention before we jump into the next stage for setup. If you're using a laptop or Wi-Fi compatible motherboard, free NAS does not support Wi-Fi, so you need to plug in the Ethernet cable into the port to get internet access. So to set up the NAS, you will need another computer connect to the same network. In your favorite browser, enter the IP address you just saw to get to the setup page. Here enter root as the username and the password that you just set up to log on to the web page. So here I'm not using the setup wizard, so if you want to follow this, just exit out of the dialog and follow this video. So here the new UI for FreeNAS, but uh, I'm more familiar with the legacy UI. So I'm going to switch to the legacy one, but um, they're pretty much the same thing other than the difference in parents. When we are at this stage, we'll go to the storage and select the drive that we want to use as the storage drive. Here, because I'm just having one hard drive, I'm going to click the plus to add this one and give it a name. If you want to know more about how to set up a RAID for the data storage for redundancy or speed, I'm going to cover it later. Next, we're going to create the user and a group for the NAS system in the account sections. Give it a group name, I'm just calling it home NAS here and then click OK.
So with the group being created, we need to add a user in our group. Enter the username and deselect this one since we've already created the group that this current user belongs to. And then give it a password. And also don't forget the full name. And then leave everything as it is and then select OK. Go back to the storage tab, select the drive we just created to add a data set, give it a name and leave other things as it is. Select the data set we just created and select change permissions. I'm here just changing the owner to the user and group that I just created and change the permission type to Windows and then select the permission recursively so that we can get access to every subfolders. Next, go to sharing and select Windows, add a Windows share and select the data set that we just created. So that's it, you have successively configured your NAS. So if you want to add a redundancy data configuration or you want to have a RAID 0 configuration for a NAS, go to storage, select pool, and then select the two disks that you want to configure. So if you want to add some redundancy to your data storage, use mirror. And if you like to gain some speed and storage size at the same time with the trade-off of higher data damage risk, select stripe. Give it a name and select create. Then follow the same step to share the storage users created and then you're good to go. To access the drives, just type the IP address in your file explorer and enter the username and password you just created in the previous process. If Windows prompts you with some errors, just wait a few seconds as the changes you just entered may take a few seconds for the machine to process. So to use this drive just as any other local drives that you may have in your computer, just map it. And then you can see it in the file explorer. Unlike the commercially available cloud services, you can only access your NAS if you're under the same local network. But it is an easy fix if you have a router that has a VPN functionality. For example, I'm using a TP-Link router here. So under advanced settings, I can enable VPN service. And when the VPN service is enabled, I can generate a certificate and use this certificate to connect my computer from an outside network to the local network to access the NAS. I've also designed and 3D printed a hard drive mount to house the drives that I'm currently using. So if you're interested in printing the same mount, check it out in the video description below. Thank you very much for watching, give it a like if you find it helpful, and also consider subscribing. I'm currently thinking about making a smart attachment to some cheap thermostat so you can make it remotely controllable, so stay tuned.